In this video we will look at the basics of an airport instrument landing system. The instrument landing system, or ILS for short, is the main precision approach aid currently in operation. It is the only approach aid, at present, that allows an aircraft to complete an automatic landing in zero visibility. The system is comprised of two parts. One, the localizer, and two, the glide slope. First, we will look at the lateral guidance of the ILS. The runway has a magnetic direction. In this example, the runway is pointing in a direction of 270 degrees magnetic. The approach course for the ILS will be the same track as the runway. This is not always the case, but it is a requirement if auto landings are to be carried out. An antenna, near the runway, transmits a frequency modulated horizontal signal, which is active from the end of the runway outwards. This beam is called the localizer, and provides the lateral signal. The signal can travel quite far, but a standard ILS localizer will normally be rated as safe to use within 25 miles of the airfield. Within 10 miles, the beam will be 35 degrees each side of the centerline. Outside 10 miles, this will reduce to 10 degrees either side of the centerline. This is to cover safety and sensitivity issues. However, in this video we will look at the basic design. The beam is split into two sections. The left-hand signal is modulated at 90 Hz, and the right-hand signal is modulated at 150 Hz. The signal modulation is also varied slightly as you move from the center line to the beam edge. The aircraft has a specialist localizer antenna, usually situated near the nose, which enables the aircraft receiving equipment to detect where on the beam the aircraft is. The antenna is able to differentiate both the 90 Hz signal and the 150 Hz signal, plus the variations within, so it can detect which side of the centerline the aircraft is, and how far across. The flight deck instrumentation provides the display. On a modern airliner, a magenta pointer will display on a horizontal scale below the attitude indicator. If the aircraft is perfectly on the centerline, the pointer will be in the center of the scale. If the aircraft moves away from the centerline, the aircraft antenna will detect the changes in modulation. This is then presented on the display. In this example, the aircraft is to the right of the centerline, so the centerline will be to the left of the aircraft. As the magenta pointer signifies the runway centerline, it will point to the left of the scale. This will indicate that the pilot needs to adjust course to the left to regain the centerline track. Likewise, if the aircraft is left of the centerline, the magenta pointer will be on the right of the scale. Should the aircraft reach the outer edges of the beam, the pointer will be at the edge of the scale. This is known as full-scale deflection. Note, if the aircraft is outside the permissible bearing of the localizer, the magenta pointer will no longer be solid. Normal procedures require the pilot not to exceed half-scale deflection. If the pilot exceeds half-scale deflection, then the approach must be discontinued. The ILS system will also provide precision guidance for the vertical descent onto the runway. A constant angle descent is provided, which is called the glide slope. A typical glide slope will be a 3 degree angle, but there can be variances due to obstacles on the approach, requiring a slightly higher altitude at a defined point. An example would be London City Airport, where the glide slope is set at 5.5 degrees. However, for auto land requirements, the glide slope will be at, or around, 3 degrees. Like the localizer beam, a vertical beam is transmitted from an antenna near the runway, 
which projects the beam upwards at the required angle. This beam is also split into two sections. The upper section is modulated at 90 Hz, and the lower section is modulated at 150 Hz. However, the carrier wave frequency is different to the localizer carrier wave frequency, so there is no interference between the two. The safe range of a glide slope beam is 17 nautical miles. The whole beam is 1.4 degrees wide, with each section being 0.7 degrees wide. The bottom of the lower beam is designed to keep above any obstacles that may be on the final approach. The aircraft has a specialist glide slope antenna, usually situated near the nose, which enables the aircraft receiving equipment to detect where on the beam the aircraft is. The flight deck instrumentation provides the display. On a modern airliner, a magenta pointer will display on a vertical scale to the side of the attitude indicator. If the aircraft is perfectly on the glide slope, the pointer will be in the center of the scale. If the aircraft moves higher or lower than glide slope, the aircraft antenna will detect the changes in modulation. This is then presented on the display. In this example, the aircraft is above the glide slope, so the glide slope will be below the aircraft. As the magenta pointer signifies the glide slope, it will point to the lower part of the scale. This will indicate that the pilot needs to increase the rate of descent to capture the ideal slope. Likewise, if the aircraft is below the glide slope, the magenta pointer will be on the upper part of the scale. This would mean the pilot would have to reduce the rate of descent to regain the glide slope. Should the aircraft reach the outer edges of the beam, the pointer will be at the edge of the scale. This is known as full-scale deflection. In this example, the pilot should only see this when level, and approaching the glide path. If the pilot sees this whilst descending on the glide slope, the approach should be abandoned, as this is not a safe position to be in. Normal procedures require the pilot not to exceed half-scale deflection, up or down. If the pilot exceeds half-scale deflection, then the approach must be discontinued. Going below the glide slope, beyond half-scale, erodes the safety of the aircraft. Note, if the aircraft is outside the allowable range of the glide slope, the magenta pointer will no longer be solid. So, as we can see, the instrument landing system provides three-dimensional approach guidance to the runway, accurately giving both lateral and vertical guidance. Using the aircraft instrumentation, the pilot adjusts heading and rate of descent to ensure they remain in the target area. If they are not in the target area, the approach must be discontinued. The perfect approach is to have both pointers in the center of the scales, as shown. Of course, modern airliners will have autopilot or flight director assistance to maintain the approach. Providing the aircraft and airfield equipment is suitable, and low visibility procedures are in force on the airfield to protect the antenna transmissions, the ILS can allow an aircraft to land in zero visibility. This, however, will be the subject of another video. We hope you enjoyed this video on the instrument landing system, and please do watch our other videos in the series.